Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make simple easy sushi at home. Um, I'm going to take you through step by step to show you how to, to make uh, Philadelphia rolls, California rolls, uh, spicy salmon rolls, and then some other ones that will be a bit of a surprise. All from the comfort of your own home. And I'm going to keep doing this until the rice is clear. Okay, so now my rice is pretty much clear. So if I even like kind of do this, you can see how um, you can just easily see the rice. It's all nice and clear. Um, you're probably never going to get it totally, totally 100% clear, but the idea is to get most of the cloudiness out of the water. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, rinse this out one last time. And again, if you have like a strainer that's really um, fine, that would work great. There's no like, you know, it has to be strained this way or whatever. I just do this because this is what we have, which I find is uh, sometimes it's a little bit awkward, but you know, you just try to find whatever it is you have in your kitchen that will work. So now I'm going to take this rice and put it in my rice cooker. Um, I bought a rice cooker and I'm really glad that I did because it just makes making rice so much easier. Um, if I didn't have a rice cooker and I was still wanting to make sushi rice, I would probably do it in the microwave because I found that um, making rice on the stove can be a little bit, um, I don't know, its results are kind of always varied and maybe, I mean, if you're a rice master and you know how to make it really well on the stove, you can do that too. I just find that especially if you're trying to um, use the rice that you have, I find it gets like stuck on the edge of the pot and whatever, whereas in the microwave it just kind of comes out really um, nicely. So, yeah, I'm going to put this all in. And then my rice cooker, what I do is just put the rice in and then fill it up to a certain line and then it'll just cook on its own. You'll find too, um, when you use the rice cooker for making, actually that's a little bit too social, making um, sushi rice, because you rinsed it so much, it actually won't take as long to make as some other kinds of rices. So we're just going to put that in and turn it on. Okay, so while you're waiting for your rice to cook, that's when you want to start uh, preparing everything else. So um, I just have a few simple things out, um, mostly because my husband only likes um, the meat sushi, so he likes all the seafood and stuff like that and doesn't really like a whole lot of vegetables, but I'm going to show you just sort of some of the basics that you can uh, use in your sushi. So um, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use, make some sushi vinegar. So if you're making about two cups of, um, of, of rice, and that's dry cups, um, you can use this really easy recipe. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've got um, some rice vinegar here, and I've got about a quarter maybe a third of a cup here and that's about that's about right so I'm just going to put some of that in and then I'm going to also add I found that um, I've used white sugar to make the sushi vinegar before and I just find that if you get something that's a bit syrupy already it kind of helps um, with the stickiness of the of the rice in general so what I've been using is I got this agave nectar um, and I don't really use it in a whole lot of other things, so I decided to just put it in my sushi and that works. So you can also use white sugar and it would be about the same thing. You could probably use, I don't know, corn syrup or molasses, anything really like sweet, it would probably work. Um, so I'm just going to put um, 
about that's one tablespoon of this into maybe two and a half tablespoons or one sorry one and a half tablespoon and then I've got some rice or some salt over here and I'm just going to put a couple teaspoons in I know like when I first started making uh, sushi vinegar I was really worried that I get all the ratios right and that everything worked out well but then I realized that that taste that's on the rice is just a mixture of these three things anyway so when you go to put it on I mean you can always add less if you like it's not really that big of a deal it's just kind of a taste thing so I'm going to put roughly maybe two teaspoons maybe just just shy of two teaspoons of salt and this is just regular salt no big deal and this is what it looks like and you're just going to stir it all in and heat it up a little bit um, because that just helps reduce it and it gets a little bit thicker and it's really again like don't get intimidated because it seems scary or anything honestly like I don't know how many times I've made sushi, but there's been a lot of times where it really wasn't very good. But, you know, you just keep trying and you find out what works and what doesn't. And I mean, there's so many videos on YouTube that you can refine how you do things and try something slightly different. As long as, you know, when you eat it, you're not totally disgusted, it's really not that big of a deal. And sushi's not really all that expensive to make in the long run, so you're kind of free to just kind of make it up as you go. So I'm just going to let that kind of just sit on its own for just a couple minutes. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to um, slice up some onion. And I just kind of do this just for a bit of taste, mostly. Um, it's always great to have things to just kind of add to whatever you're making. And um, so I always kind of make some onion just as like an extra, you know, an extra little something to put in the sushi and make it taste, give it just that much more of a little flavor kick. So you can cut this up as much as you like. And again, you don't even need to use onion. You can use something else or make, uh, I think I put coleslaw in it one time. It's not really that, I mean, when people go to eat it, they don't go, oh, that's cool fly in there. They're just kind of like, oh, there's something tasty in there with the crab and the avocado or whatever else you're going to use. So I just put some onion on this pan. And again, there's no, like, real specified amount. You just make some so that you have kind of something on hand to add to a roll when you, you want to. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly take actually some barbecue sauce and put that on the onion and then stick that on the stove. Okay, so now our sushi vinegar has kind of come to quite a, I would say a boil, so that's fine. You can take it right off of the heat and kind of just stir it around a little bit. You definitely don't want this to like scald or anything like that. and it doesn't. When I say reduce, it doesn't have to be this thick mixture. It just has to be something that you eventually put on the sushi. And once this cools down, it'll get quite sticky. Okay, so now what I'm doing is just chopping this crab up. Um, and I'm just trying to put it into little pieces because I'm going to make it into kind of a crab salad so that uh, we can make some California rolls. So my rice is finished cooking. So what I'm actually going to do is... Uh, Whip it over in this bowl, and again, lots of lots of um, sorry people who make this are always like, oh, you need a 